Okay, I've logged into NetLab and I've scheduled some time in the lab here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Exercises here. And I'm going to go to Chapter 2, which is the first exercise that you can do um, in NetLab. And I'm going to click Change Exercise. Okay, um, there's default configs. It says that there's default configuration files for the lab and I want to load them into the lab devices so I'll click yes so that we get the default configuration files loaded. Now you can see here that they're loaded, they're loading that is, and you can click the status tab to keep an eye on what state they are in loading up. So you can see here loading configuration file loading configuration file, loading configuration file. Okay, I'll go back to topology. This is the lab that we're going to do. It involves a router up here, two firewall routers here, two switches, and then two clients here, right? Um, if you need to see the instructions, which you will, right, there's a PDF that you can open up right here, show lab content, that will open up all of the um, instructions for the lab. Okay, so I've already opened it up and printed it out so that I have something to go by. Now, let's see status on how we're doing. Okay, we're still loading. Um, once we're done loading, we'll get started and um, let's see here. Now, these PCs have already loaded and they're online. So what we can do is we could configure the IP addresses on the PCs. Now, the default configuration files should be in place for these devices here. They should already have their interfaces configured and they should have some static routes that will enable communications. But the PCs do need to be configured, so I'm going to configure those now. So I'll click on this PC. And I'll double click over here, open up the local area connection, the NIC. I'll go into the NIC and set the IP address. Now the IP address for this machine needs to be 192.168.1.3 and the gateway will be the router is at 1.1 and I'm just going to set the DNS to be the same although I'm not sure that I need to do that but I'll do it anyway okay alright now that I've got that set up I'm going to click on PCC and configure its NIC highlight TCP IP and and then I'll put in the gateway for that device Okay, now I have both PCs um, configured with IP addresses. Now that we have the second PC's IP address configured, I'm going to go back to our topology of all our devices, click on status, and see that everything is up. So now, what I can do is, I'll go to PCA, and I'll open up a command prompt. And first, I'll try to ping the router. And I can ping the router. And then I'll try to ping the other client to see if I can ping all the way across the network. And if I can ping all the way across the network, which I can, 
that is a good sign. That means that PCA could ping its gateway right here, this router on the fast Ethernet 0 in interface, and I could also ping the PCC over here, so the ping was able to traverse all the way across one, two, three hops, three routers, reach the PC, and then come all the way back on three hops, and so I know that these routers have IP addresses configured, they must, and they also must have static routes configured, so we're at a good starting point to start our lab. Now, Another thing that I want to um, mention before we get started, and this can be a um, this can be a kind of a saver, a lifesaver if you're doing a lab in NetLab, and that is you probably want to save your configuration files for your routers and your switches with about 10 minutes remaining in 10 or 15 minutes remaining in your lab time. So if I click on save, I will just click save, save, save. I can put a date here on the different configurations or I could just put one right here and save all of the routers and switches configurations and here's another important point they're gonna ask us in this lab right away to change some settings on the routers on these two routers R1 and R3 when we change those settings we have to be careful of one thing and that is if we scroll down here for our for us to connect through NetLab into these routers and switches, the routers need a, um, a console password of Cisco and enable secret password of class. So if the lab asks us to change the password to let's say Cisco 12345 and we leave it that way w and save the um, configuration, we will not be able to connect back into the routers when we try to reload and pick up where we left off. So whatever you want to do, if you're going to change these settings, make sure you change them back on the routers and switches before you save your lab. Otherwise, you won't be able to pick up where you left off when you try to reload at a later time. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into R1 and I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. When you click on R1, it opens up a um, session, basically a Telnet session, to um, the router, right? And now I click Enter, and you can see I'm in the router. Now I'm going to go to Preferences, and I'm going to change the font size so that it's easy to see for this um, lab. So I'll change it to 18, and now you can get see the command prompt pretty big, right? So one of the first commands that they want you to do is type configure terminal, right? Hit enter, okay? And now you're in global config mode, and they want you to do this command, security, security, passwords, min dash length, right? and set the length of the password to the recommended amount in the curriculum which would be 10 characters minimum. Now 10 character password is much more secure but remember what I said right here when you clicked save it told you that the console password needs to be five characters and it needs to be Cisco and the secret needs to be five characters and it needs to be the word class. So if we do that we'll get locked out of our router even if we save our configuration file and it tries to reload later we will get locked out so what we're gonna do is we'll go back to topology here and I'm going to put in instead of 10 I'm going to put in 5 but I'm gonna remember that Cisco intends for the password length, um, a, a secure password length to be 10 characters. Okay. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the enable secret now. Enable secret and in the lab in the PDF that comes with the chapter 2 net lab, uh, it's chapter 2 lab A securing the router for administrative access, they recommend the password Cisco12345, right? But we know that it needs to be for this net lab right and for us to be able to connect back in we need to do class as the secret password then we'll be able to get back in later so I'm just gonna do that alright now I'm gonna configure the passwords for the different 
um, ports and uh, on the router. So mainly the console port, which is the main configuration port when you initially start up a router, the auxiliary port for um, dialing into a router through a modem, and the virtual access lines or VTY lines which are used for Telnet and SSH. And to do that what I'm going to do is I'll say line and this is right in the lab and I'm just following the instructions in the lab just giving a walkthrough to help for the students that are new to NetLab. I'm going to do line console 0 which gets me into line configuration mode and then I'm going to do password and instead of using their recommendation of Cisco um, console or Cisco con pass I'm going to do Cisco because that is the password that we need to get back into the router later okay and then I will do an, a timeout scenario exec timeout five um, so exec timeout five which stands for five minutes and then zero which stands for zero seconds okay so we've we've put in line console zero for the console um, port password is going to be Cisco we're going to have a timeout time of five minutes and zero seconds now we're going to put in the login command and then after we put in the login command we're going to type in logging synchronous which will enable us to not be interrupted when we're putting in commands by the router output by let's say um, some type of uh, output like uh, maybe an interface going up or down will, won't interrupt you when you're typing in your commands which can be pretty frustrating okay so now we need to do the other lines so for line let's see here line line AUX zero line auxiliary zero it's going to be the same thing password Cisco and then exec timeout will time out of our um, connection after five minutes zero seconds and we'll put in the login command which will allow us to log in with just this password and then also the logging synchronous command which won't interrupt our um, which won't interrupt our session alright and now we'll do the line VTY virtual terminal access for Telnet and SSH there's five different lines that we can configure virtually and we'll also put in password Cisco and exec timeout of five minutes zero seconds and the login command and we don't need to put in the logging synchronous command on the VTY lines or maybe even the auxiliary lines because they don't come across the Telnet session I don't believe